Welcome, folks. Um, today's talk is going to be scaling Kubernetes fleet management using Argo CD and the Gitos Bridge. My name is Carlos Santana. I work for AWS as a EKS specialist, uh, solutions architect. That means that I work with a lot of customers uh, that are using EKS to build their platform, internal developer platform, on top of Kubernetes and GitOps concepts. Uh, also, a member of a contributor to the Canoe project uh, that is based on uh, technologies from the CNCF and others, uh, also in the platform spa uh, space. Um, and with me is, go ahead, Blake. Yeah, uh, my name is Blake Romano. I'm a senior software engineer for Imagine Learning. We're a K through 12 education company. Um, I am been the company for two years, so I work on the internal developer platform, uh, kind of the legacy version, as well as the next gen, pla uh, next gen version of our internal developer platform. Uh, so obviously that's us. And Imagine Learning right, is a K through 12 education company. We do digital first um, curriculum and we kind of empower educators to inspire breakthrough moments in every student's kind of unique uh, learning opportunity. Um, Imagine Learning is a company that's kind of grown through acquisitions. Um, this has led us to having several legacy hosting platforms and internal developer platforms, or what we'll call IDPs. Um, the technologies in these platforms were not cohesive. Um, in some of these legacy platforms, we were using CloudFormation, some were using Terraform, some were using hand-rolled infrastructure, um, you know, being provisioned in the Cloud Platform's UI console, and we really needed to reimagine our organization's IDP. Um, we have a small team of software engineers that are fairly competent in infrastructure to help build out an internal developer platform, and we really had a desire to unify on technology to help provide a hosting platform for our organization. Um, you know, we worked with AWS and other folks um, kind of in the internal developer platform space, um, looked at industries, um, looked at the industry and looked at trends within the industry and came up with a stack that allows us to, um, allows platform engineers to move quickly and manage several Kubernetes based environments, as well as allowing engineers to move quickly within our organization while following all the best practices. Um, so for our next generation internal developer platform, we've been working with open source projects like the Cloud Native Operational uh, excellence group or the canoe group um, canoe has brought together different organizations uh, collaborating on how to best build an internal developer platform on kubernetes um, for a Kuber, or for a compute platform we're using kubernetes to run the compute of our applications this is running in aws on eks um, for infrastructure as code my team is responsible for creating and maintaining core infrastructure components um, think of things like eks clusters vpcs um, and we use pulumi to deploy this um, which is you know, part of the focus of today's talk. Uh, we also use cross-plane compositions and cross-plane to allow developers to deploy infrastructure as code for their specific applications. Um, for continuous deployment and delivery, we chose Argo CD, um, and we follow a GitOps pattern to do fleet management across all of our EKS clusters and be able to declare you know, all of the components of our uh, platform using GitOps, which is the other part of today's talk. And lastly, we're using Backstage as a portal for our developers. Um, if you're not aware of Pulumi, Pulumi is an infrastructure as code tool um, that allows you to write code that can provision infrastructure resources. Like in the code snippet you're seeing here, this is deploying an S3 bucket. Um, we want to adopt Pulumi to build out our platform infrastructure because as I mentioned, we're kind of a team of software engineers. We want to be able to uh, have the same patterns that we're using in you know, regular code uh, to be able to build out these platform features quickly, um, kind of using all these same paradigms and programming that we're used to. Uh, Pulumi also has very easy to use GitHub actions, which allowed us to deploy quickly and adopt a GitOps model in our deployment of our infrastructure as code. Um, it also has state management in the cloud. So unlike um, something like Terraform, where you have to manage state in S3, uh, Pulumi manages all that in the cloud, so it puts less of a burden on us. Um, we also can create multiple stacks using the same set of code, which allows us to be able to deploy several different versions of our cluster or different, se several different versions of our stacks um, very quickly, all based on the same code. So kind of trying to keep that code really, really dry. Um, and it allows us to also parameterize the configuration of stacks using YAML files. Um, and that configuration allows us to change the configuration based on what stack we're creating. Um, and today you'll see how we're using Plumi to create these platform resources for our feet of clusters. So Pulumi is a great infrastructure as code tool. However, when, we're, when we were first building out the platform, we tried using it to deploy Kubernetes resources. And what we realized is when you deploy resources uh, in Kubernetes with Pulumi, it's not ideal, right? Pulumi is not really able to handle a consistently changing um, resource like in Kubernetes. 
This is where Argo CD comes into our infrastructure and to, into our tech stack. Argo CD allows us to have a GitOps-based model that um, has a very powerful UI to understand desired versus observed state in Git, and it allows us to connect to multiple Kubernetes clusters. So it allows us to connect to all the clusters we're managing in our fleet and deploy resources into those clusters. Um, Argo CD also has a feature called application sets, which allows us to dynamically generate multiple Argo CD applications. Um, and that has helped us be able to manage deployments of the same application multiple times, you know, to different environments or different clusters. So these tools are great, um, but integrating them together is really, really hard. So there's no really clearly described pattern on how you take details from your infrastructure's code and using your GitOps pattern. So if I deploy an RDS cluster in my infrastructure's code, how do I actually get those connection details? How do I get the endpoint um, into my GitOps? And there's, there was really no way to be able to do that. Um, and so what the GitOps bridge allows us to do is it allows us to have a pattern to be able to do those things um, and manage our fleet. Thank you, Blake, for that intro. So, um, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is getting out. So everybody um, starts doing fleet management, and what that means is managing multiple clusters in groups. And uh, the journey starts with a dev clusters. Everybody uh, starts with a dev clusters, like experimenting what type of apps it's going to deploy, or maybe moving the application from just seeing something locally like the, uh, Docker Compose uh, into Kubernetes. So everybody gets a dev cluster, Everybody's happy, we got our POC working, and uh, the manager says, let's move on. And then you build your staging cluster, and staging cluster is kind of like a pre-prod uh, cluster, and then you configure the same thing, and you, like, it's not that hard. We did the first one, now we know Kubernetes, maybe we got a, certi a certification like CKA or CKAD, and I can do that. Then you get into production, and then you notice that maybe the, the cluster that you created is was running on Minikube or Kind uh, when people start asking, like, how are we going to run this in production? And this is where you look into building the production cluster in something like a cloud provider. In, in my case, where I see a lot of end users using EKS, a managed Kubernetes service in AWS. And when they get to that, did they get that point is do we keep doing it manually? Like, we keep CTO apply, uh, creating clusters like with Kind or Minikube or Kube ADM, and then they start using different tooling. Um, in this case, they would choose something like Terraform, uh, CloudFormation, or CDK. In some cases, we've seen users using Crossplane. In our case, um, with Imagine Learnings, um, we are using Pulumi to do that. And the story continues. So very easy. Let's use infrastructure as code to deploy uh, our cluster. So everybody has prop two because it's a different region. And then, but things start growing up, uh, growing into like, well, if we can configure the cluster control plane and maybe the VPC networking and the storage um, for the worker nodes, um, let's also deploy the Kubernetes resources using Terraform, using Pulumi. And this is where you start getting into trouble because other teams in your org also want a cluster from you, from the platform teams. So maybe the, the AI uh, team or machine learning team is wants their own cluster, so you get more clusters, then you get into more clusters. So that becomes a fleet management. And you start doing all this Terraform work or Pulumi work or cross-plane or cloud formation and deploying Helm charts and Kubernetes YAMLs and config maps. And it becomes kind of a, of a mess uh, because people that are used to working Kubernetes or they're starting to learn about Kubernetes, they learn about GitOps. But they look at the infrastructure, infrastructure code or infrastructure declarative yeah, um, files and they're deploying all these resources through Kubernetes and they, they get into trouble on reconciliation where you want the desired state to always be in sync. So one of the patterns is stop using these infrastructure as code tools for Kubernetes resources, keep using it to create con uh, the control plane, in this case of EKS, or creating the VPC networking or RDS, those type of things, but then start using the GitOps tool. In this example, it's Argo CD and then reduce the amount of Terraform that you have or Pulumi or infrastructure as code uh, to the bare minimum of the cloud APIs and then delegate everything else into Argo CD. But like Blake was saying, like how do we pass some metadata that we need for our Helm charts or, or Kubernetes resources to Argo CD? And that's, that's where we use the power of application sets. And these patterns of the GitOps bridge have come to us of looking a lot of like present here in GitOpsCon and other GitOpsCon 
where a lot of end users are actually taking advantage of application sets to manage, to do fleet management uh, at large scale, to uh, configure clusters in groups. So you have your machine learning, or you have your region, or you have certain type of clusters, and try to keep them upgraded, the version of Kubernetes, but also the resources at the same time using Argo CD. And uh, one example is the, the GitOps bridge is, these are kind of the benefits. Using application sets, uh, you can have a single cluster or multi-cluster. You can bootstrap, instead of using apps of apps, you'll be bootstrapping of apps of application sets, and then you get apps. Uh, the metadata and secret that you need, you do it natively, so you don't have to use an Argo CD plugin. So you can use a generator, like the cluster generator, or we're going to show the Git generator doing that, and other benefits. A high level, this is what's happening. We use Pulumi to create the resources, and those resources, AWS resources or cloud resources, are work, uh, one of them is the work, worker identity or pod identity. Um, in AKS, we used to have something, we have IRSA, but now we have pod identity. But you need to create the AI roles and policies. That's very good to do in Pulumi and create the EKS cluster. Everything else, like I said, you move into Argo CD, and, and meaning the add-ons on the Helm charts. Um, so this is an example on actually how it works. So everybody starts with the infrastructure as code. In this case, it's Pulumi, and you create the networking to deploy your cluster and you deploy your EKS cluster, but then it's so easy to put in that code uh, to put the Helm charts for the add-ons, things like Valero that we're going to see a demo on that, CERT Manager, external DNS. But the idea is to have the infrastructure as code create the cluster secret or representation of that cluster into Git or maybe into a secret directly or through seeing something like AWS Secret Manager or, or ESO, external secret operator. So the idea is to move all that configuration that is Kubernetes resources into Argo CD, even to the point, the worker nodes. So instead of using managed node groups, you start using a CNCF project called, like Car called Carpenter, where um, the workloads will identify what are the nodes that they need, and then you do all that in YAML files using GitOps. Um, the same thing for the networking and the storage. And um, I went a little bit quickly because we want to give you a demo of showing you some code and some examples that we built for you that you can take advantage of this pattern. Blake? So um, this, uh, this repo is public, so feel free to come take a look at it once you know, the talk is done. Uh, but essentially, this is a demo of showing what um, Pulumi code and this kind of Argo CD application sets and how this actually works in you know, kind of the reality. Um, you want bigger, okay. Is that good enough? Okay, perfect. Um, so essentially what you're looking at here is a stack file. Um, so in here, we're actually setting some configurations for our, um, how we want to deploy our infrastructure's code. So in this case, we want to create a hub stack. Um, that hub stack is going to create a hub cluster where our Argo CD uh, will live. And in this case, we're setting things like the AWS region, some CIDR blocks that we want for the VPC, um, and different configurations, especially for our components like Valero. Um, we're also setting what components do we actually want enabled in this cluster. Um, so in this case, we're actually saying we want, to, we want Valero enabled in this cluster. Um, and you can see that configuration right here. Um, in the kind of entry point into our Pulumi code, we're essentially going to create outputs. And those outputs we're going to use and actually output to our GitOps, um, what I'll call GitOps configuration file. Or in Argo CD, it's a cluster secret. And we're gonna use those and we're gonna output those into the annotations of that secret to be able to use in those application sets. Um, and in this example, we're creating things like a VPC. Um, we're going to create things like an Argo role, which I'll talk more about, as well as an EKS cluster. Um, once we're doing all that, we're gonna create things like the pod identity EKS add-on. Um, and we're going to essentially create our GitOps configuration file. And I'll go into that code in a little bit. Um, and here, we're actually going to create a component. So in this case, we're going to create a Valero component. And for Valero, we need things like an S3 bucket. And so in this case, we're creating an S3 bucket, obviously with private access, because we want to be secure and not have um, people hack our stuff. Um, we're also going to create things like an IAM role that we can assume with URSA. Um, and we're going to return those things and be able to pass those as metadata to our cluster secrets. Um, here, I wanted to kind of talk about um, the configuration we're creating for creating roles that Argo is gonna be able to use. 
So typically what you'll see folks do is you'll see, okay, you create a hub cluster, that already has access to that EKS cluster. But when you wanna start adding multiple clusters, it's, okay, how do I do that? And that's been a really hard problem. You'll see people create things like access keys and secret access keys. Um, and you don't really need to do that. What you can do in this case is actually have the Argo role um, be able to assume roles, other roles. And so what we do in our hub cluster is we allow the Argo role to assume other roles and when we're creating a spoke cluster, we can actually have it where um, we allow the Argo role to assume it and add that trust relationship. And one of the nice things you can do here is you can actually grab outputs from, a, from one stack and use it in another. So you can see in this code right here, what we're doing is we're using the hub stack, we're grabbing the outputs from that hub stack and we're able to use it when we're um, creating a trust relationship in our spoke clusters, um, which has been really, really powerful. So we don't have to store things like access keys and secret access keys, um, which helps our security posture. Um, this is the code that is essentially generating that, what I'll call that GitOps configuration or that cluster secret for Argo CD. Um, and you may be saying to yourself, well, right here, I'm actually creating a repository file. You know, isn't it bad practice to create a cluster secret and create a secret and store that in Git? Well, the good thing is, is because we're using IAM roles and none of the secret information is really secret, we can put it in Git. There's no secret information here. Argo CD just happened to use a secret as an object to store this information. Um, but really there's nothing secret in this configuration file that we're concerned about it being on GitHub for. Um, so this Pulumi code will essentially go, uh, we have GitHub workflows that will automatically deploy. So when I merge to main, it deploys all my stacks at the same time and it can update those configuration files right in Git. Um, and so this is what one of those cluster secrets ends up looking like. So you'll see our annotations here. And so these annotations are actually coming from our Pulumi code. And that Pulumi code is generating these outputs and putting them into this Git file. And whatever it's changing, that Pulumi needs to, or knows, hey, let me go create a new commit and update this file. Um, and you can, see, you can see also here, we're giving it things like the URL for the cluster. Um, and things like that. We also have labels. So in this case, we're actually having a label for our dev cluster to say, hey, we want to enable Valero and we want to enable our application. Um, and so those things are gonna be used in the application sets that Argo CD has to be able to generate applications. Um, and this is a bootstrap, uh, this is a bootstrap uh, bash script that we have that essentially will bootstrap that hub cluster, right? Because you need Argo CD to actually be running first before you can kind of get any of that started. Um, so in this case, it'll actually deploy Argo CD and give you the commands and actually apply a, what the bootstrap of app of applications as well as port forwarding um, Argo CD and tell you how to do that and access the Argo UI. So when you go to the Argo UI, um, you may see something like this and you'll actually see that the clusters um, for our hub cluster, our dev cluster, and in, case, in this case, our production cluster are actually connected to our um, Argo CD instance. And so it's using those cluster secrets to be able to get that connection. Um, you can see here, this is our bootstrap application. And so this bootstrap application is doing two things. It's deploying our cluster secrets and making sure those are consistently reconciling with what Argo CD actually sees. And you're also seeing these application sets. Um, and you can see in this case, this application set for Valero is getting deployed in all three clusters. Um, our bootstrap application, we only want in the hub cluster. So it's only being deployed to the hub cluster. And in this case, our guestbook application is only being deployed to our dev and our production cluster because those are production clusters and clusters meant for you know, running workloads. So we only want those, uh, that application to be deployed into those two clusters. Um, I also just wanted to show, so this is the backup storage location that Valero is creating a part of the Helm chart. And so when you look down here, you can actually see um, this dev bucket is the bucket that we created in Pulumi and that metadata was never hard coded. It was just an output from our metadata in our application set. And so if I look at the production version of this um, application, it's gonna show you the same thing, but instead of it being hyphen dev, it's gonna be hyphen prod. Um, so in this case, you can see it's hyphen prod. So it's two different buckets and these are outputs from the metadata from our Pulumi code. Um, I also just wanna show, so this is our guestbook application. And so this is a Helm chart that we wrote um, to deploy essentially a guestbook application. Um, in our dev environment, you know, where I don't have uh, as much workload, you know, as much uh, traffic as I would in a production environment, I only have two replicas running. And so I actually set that and I can override things at the environment level. Um, so in this case, in our dev environment, I'm saying, hey, I only want two replicas of my guestbook application running. But in production, where I may be starting to see more traffic, I actually want three replicas running of my 
um, application. And so you can actually set environment configurations and by using Helm and, and values files and stacking values files on each other, you're able to do these overrides in a really intelligent way um, and be able to do things based off the cluster or the environment or any other metadata you wanna be able to um, configure things based off of. And so just to preview, this is some of the um, actions that are running and that you can run. Um, so in this case, I can actually run a workflow that will preview any changes that may be there um, in my infrastructure as code. And so if I refresh this, so you can see this is gonna run, and so this will do a preview. There's also GitHub Actions to deploy um, new stacks or deploy stacks and update them, destroy, initialize, um, or just remove stacks from configuration. Um, so that's kind of the demo we have um, and just how this ends up working in reality. So uh, to recap, the the pattern actually uh, the pattern uh, relies on using application sets. Uh, the idea is to use application sets to grab that metadata that the infrastructure as code is is doing, and then application sets are very useful because the idea of uh, having too many when you have at this scale of fleet management, you will have uh, a, a very 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 large of number of applications, Argo seed applications. We have worked with. Uh, in, my, in my team and AWS, we have worked with companies like Adobe uh, into it that they have like very large number of Argo CDs. And imagine yourself having those, every Argo app in a YAML file, in a Git repo. You just shifted the problem of like managing a lar large number of application sets to a large number of files sitting in Git, right? So the idea of application set is to generate the, um, the Argo application and then reduce the amount of configuration and repetitiveness that you have. And application sets can work with, with Helm, can work with Customize, uh, but here what we want to highlight is um, the, the things that we have extracted into the pattern. And the idea is that there, this came, and this, um, from the talk from Cortis, uh, I learned that he does the same thing as, as me. Uh, I go to Argo CD, and I know, why is this a, I know why this is a problem, because when I go to the Argo CD Slack channel, I can see the same questions being asked again and again and again. How do I bootstrap Argo CD with ECAS or a managed Kubernetes cluster from other uh, cloud provider? And there's another cloud provider in the GitOps Bridge uh, channel that we're collaborating. So it's not just AWS, other cloud providers are, are working on this. And it's, it's, it's a way of like communicating or educating the folks of how to leverage Argo, uh, Argo CD application sets and then coming back to the community of like what are the features missing or what are the generators that are missing? Um, or, for example, the latest feature of application sets was add, adding uh, dynamic plugins. So in this case, we're highlighting a few of the pattern of, of the features of application sets that we're using in the GitOps bridge for these patterns of like uh, Pulumi and Argo CD or Terraform and Argo CD. So uh, the first one at the top is when you're in production and somebody by mistakes remove an application set, the last thing that you want is to also remove the Argo CD applications. So this is a safety net of a um, prevents outages, which is the preserve resource on deletion. So this is kind of like the patterns that you can learn from other people in production. The other one is the merge generator, which basically we use to override the cluster version. So if I want to have in every cluster a certain version of, in this case, uh, Valero, um, you can set it to default, but then in staging you want a different version, and then in production you want a different version. So you, we use we show you how to use the merge uh, generator uh, with the cluster and um, and the listing. And the next one is the chart name in a single place. The idea is if you have the chart name, the repository, and the versions in application set, uh, you can build some scripting automation, and we have a script in the repo that can go through every application set or configure another tool that would analyze like what is the latest version or patch version in every, in every grouping. Um, then the next one, and, and you can take a look at the, at the Python script or you can write your own uh, to do that. Also the, the benefit of like doing diffing, you can look up what are the Argo apps uh, that are deployed and then diffing that against the, the Git repo. And for uh, the overrides, um, it's also another pattern where you 
if you were doing everything with Pulumi or Terraform, you probably will have all these values files for all the environments, so staging and dev and prod, and usually you have a rainbow cluster, which I call a unicorn cluster, which is the cluster that you want to experiment something, but you don't want to use the values YAML files from everyone. You want to use a specific one for the cluster. Um, so the idea is to use a kind of recent feature of application set, which it was using um, sources with an S, and the idea is to have a GitHub location where you have your values file for Helm and a different entry for the, where the Helm chart is located. It could be in a register or in a file. And that way you can have now move those values files that were sitting maybe in a Terraform Git repo or Pulumi Git repo and move them to the GitOps repo and have a directory structure where you can have environments and dev, staging, production, and maybe override clusters. So you're overriding the configuration based on environments, but you don't, not necessarily you have to use customize. You can use Helm to do that. The same thing for uh, projects. So that's an example. So the repo offers um, right now 20, I think it's like 40 Argosy application sets for the common um, add-ons that you have in AWS, but also open source add-ons. And we accept contributions for that. Um, and then this is the, the QR code. If you want to take a look at the example Git repo, in the repo, we'll have also the slides and we'll post the YouTube video when it's available. And also um, links to other projects that are, we are working on and you can find us on the Slack for the Canoe project. It's one that is, this is the GitOps bridge and Argo CD. It's kind of a building block of building an internal developer platform. But the Canoe project is something that we're working with other companies, like for example, Nike and Autodesk on building an internal developer platform on Kubernetes like Blake said. Um, that uses things like uh, Backstage and Crossplane and ACK um, to build a, a whole stack um, of developing your platform faster, even to the point of having an ID, a, a kind cluster with all the stack deployed with a CLI with one command. And with a kind cluster, you even have a Git server inside an Argo CD that you can experiment with these um, patterns to build your internal, internal developer platform. Um, so I think, I think that's it. Uh, we have time for, for questions. How are we doing with time? Yeah, I think we're good. How many minutes, how many minutes we have? Yeah, we have three. I think they're gonna pass them around. Okay, question? Hello. Um, so I think you demonstrated like a manual way of doing progressive deployments from one cluster to another, where you basically say like, oh, dev has this version, staging has this version, prod has this version. Uh, do, do, does application set support any way to like automate that in some capacity? Like say, you know, oh, dev, we updated to this version and it passed some kind of like a health test. Now I want application set to manage like the next uh, set of clusters. That's for where I think, but I don't know if, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you can talk about. Oh, here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, progressive things. CI, CI and CD, marrying, okay, yeah. There's different patterns to do that. One of them is progressive things, another pattern is people are building their own CI, CD, progressive delivery. Hi, so I have a question about uh, cross-plane. Are you guys uh, trying to use uh, XRDs uh, for other clusters, like spoke clusters? So what we use cross-plane for is really for um, application teams to deploy their infrastructure. So one of the problems that we have is with Pulumi, we you know, there's um, a lot of ways you can, can deploy things, and a lot of them could be insecure un or unreliable. So the goal with Crossplane is to provide people with XRDs and stuff to be able to deploy their infrastructure's code kind of in a safe and reliable way. Uh, for platform engineers, right, theoretically, we should know the best practices, and it's easier for us to do that in code, um, which is why we use Pulumi, but Crossplane is really for our application developers that say, hey, I need an S3 bucket for my, um, for my you know, uh, application. And uh, the other question, sorry. Go for it. Uh, backstage, did you guys uh, create any uh, IDP platform using Knoe? Because Knoe actually spins up a backstage. Mm -hmm. We are still in the beginning phases of our backstage adoption in our next gen platform. We do use it heavily in our legacy platforms, mainly as a kind of uh, software template and catalog uh, system for our services. We do have some custom plugins that we've written in there as well. Um, but yeah, it's, we're still very much in the stages of trying to build that out and, and idealize what that can be for our developers. 
But you're going to continue in that journey, Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah, so the, it has a positive sentiment on yes. so far on you seeing backstage. Yes, we love backstage. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he said it. <laughs> <laughs> um, more questions or we out of time? We'll, we'll be here all day, so yes. we came for, for giving this talk, but also talking to other people of like, you know, learning from you, what you're struggling, um, what other solutions. This is an open source project, um, architecture patterns, uh, which is a, something that uh, I saw a lot of questions in Slack. Um, I'm part also of the Argo CD stick scalability, so you have questions about scaling Argo CD. Uh, you are welcome to, to ask me or the other Argo. There's other Argo maintainers here, uh, contributors. Um, so I, I think that's it. Thank you so much.